So ladies and gentlemen, I know this is a news roundup video, but I also know it's April 1st, so I just want to put it out there. I'm not going to be pulling any pranks. There's no Robin in the Batman 2 confirmed or no, the Batman 2 cancelled fake stories in this video. I've already seen a billion fake news topics stuff going out there on social media so you know I, I see a lot of people falling for it but this video is just going to be your bog standard Boba Talks news roundup so we're getting into the DCU we're getting into some Batman stuff Joker 2 just other little bits and pieces that I am absolutely dying to know your thoughts about but actually you know what let me know down in the comments below since it's April 1st what was the most ridiculous news story fake news story that you heard today as always as well guys timestamps will be in this video on the video bar in the description hover over it skip around but i do as always recommend staying tuned for the whole video so you're up to date on absolutely every little tidbit so starting off with my james gunn segment again i i am determined to get a little james gunn segment jingle and there's been several replies with regards to dc that i've seen people speaking about so initially we have this user here saying hey james when are you going to cast the rest of the authority members we won't green light a film until we have a finished script we're happy with and in general so he says and in general because it doesn't necessarily mean this will apply to absolutely mother freaking everything but in general we won't cast a film until the script is finished this is why some projects are moving faster than anticipated and others are moving more slowly it's always going to be quality first no matter what so i think you can you know some other projects that are moving faster i guess would be supergirl woman of tomorrow um peacemaker season two but yeah ultimately i guess we won't be getting anything for the authority especially any other cast members until that script for that movie is is fully done and written and, and it makes you think you know because the authority was meant to be the first movie provisionally after superman because it went superman and then lanterns as the tv series in between um you know superman and then the authority now since supergirl woman of tomorrow seems to be rocketing forward with all kinds of development we've got millie alcock cast as supergirl what if like uh, maybe this won't happen but like what if there's a supergirl movie after superman granted you might still get lanterns in between or maybe that's changed up this is what i mean i think gun needs to do and this is what he was teasing a little while ago with regards to those are our only two options when that fan asked him about hey what you know what about san diego comic Con? what about what david zaslav said about showing the full spectrum of the dcu over the next 10 years and the plans that are involved with all of that and he was like those are our only two options meaning that okay well are we going to get like another youtube video another uh kind of fandom esque event maybe not that but anyway before i go too off topic here all i'm trying to say is i feel like we need a little bit of a refresher at some point and i think fans are expecting that because again you know, with these reshuffled projects, what is the new layout? So you get you get what I'm trying to say there. I wonder if Lanterns is still going to be on track to be the Max DCU series uh, that releases between Superman and whatever the next film is, whether that is still the authority or maybe it will be something expedited like Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. But we also had, you know, this user here say, so besides Superman and Peacemaker Season 2, are there any other DCU projects that have scripts yet? And he says, yes. And then we have this user say, just Supergirl and Creature Commandos, right? And Gunn says, nope. And then he expands on that nope by then saying, meaning not only them. But of course, yeah, that, that's true. You know, when this other user says, just Supergirl and Creature Commandos, I mean, I think they're forgetting at this point, we also have Peacemaker Season 2 all written, um, and that's filming in the next few months uh, from what Jennifer Holland has teased to us. Um, so that's Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. We know that the screenplay was, you know, done for that basically last year, the fall of last year, Novemberish actually. Critch Commandos, obviously, that that all the lines were recorded ages ago, and they're all in the animated section now, really trying to perfect that before it releases. Now... Other scripts out there is what intrigues me. I wonder what those are, because it's the kind of the situation where just because we haven't heard news about it, as I always say here on the channel, doesn't mean that there isn't news to be said. It's just this not being said right now, because maybe we'll hear about it when there's more things to say. Maybe we'll hear about it more at San Diego Comic Con or whatever other, you know, those are our only two options, as Gunn said, whatever else he may have planned that I keep referring to. Maybe Waller, maybe. Well, I would love for Lanterns to already have a done script um, and maybe even hear about, you know, going into a bit more development with casting over the next several months because we've had teasers like that, we can't forget. Back, I believe, um, a couple of months ago, James Gunn said a year after 
Gods and Monsters was announced one year ago today. Pierre and I introduced our DC Slate for the first time, and he thanks everyone for the support. Episodes of Creature Commandos are being finished that will release later this year, and at least two more projects are gearing up to go in the next couple of months. Amazing scripts keep coming in, and incredible talent are being attached to new projects planned and unplanned. Maybe the latter there could reference how Anna Naguera, who wrote the screenplay, uh, for Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is now reportedly attached to write the Teen Titans movie. So th this is what I mean. Like, uh, who, who really knows? But I do think we will be getting a refresher at some point, maybe some more clarity there with the current state of things. But then we have in other news here from James Gunn, um, he commented on what we covered, I believe, last week. Um, the Batman Part 2, Boyd Holbrook cast as Harvey Dent. Now, this actually ruffled some feathers because Gunn replied to it saying fake. Some people are like, this this isn't your movie to comment on, James Gunn. Get your nose out of Matt Reeves' business. And it's like, look, I don't know what it is, but people feel this. And, and you know, this is me of all people, like the biggest Matt Reeves fanboy saying this. I find it a bit weird how people get so up in arms about it. And that is that the, the head, n none other than the head of DC Studios is debunking a rumor. Matt Reeves is barely on social media, and I get having like a protectiveness, if you will, but like, what what, are, what even is this, what are you protecting here? If anything, the more you break it down, break down the layers, it's like, oh yeah, well, this guy's the head of DC Studios. Matt Reeves works under DC Studios. He literally had a meeting last year with James Gunn about explaining and pitching the Batman 2 story also so that they have a bit of air traffic control, that they don't clash into each other's Batman ideas. So like, of course, if James Gunn is a bit more of a vocal person on social media, if I really try and look at things as objectively as I can here, you know, as a fan of both of these guys, I, I just think Gunn's like, hey, I'm saying this, if I can shut it down with just getting on my phone whilst I'm, I don't know, getting a coffee or waiting in line or something, I'll just say fake. So people don't run with the rumor. It's just weird to me that people, even as I would say one of, you know, the biggest Batman fans out there, as in the Batman, Matt Reeves' Batman, I, it, I don't get it. I don't see it as a huge issue. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if this was like blown up to the state of Matt, if James Gunn was talking so much about Matt Reeves' movie, talking and teasing about the plot, answering all these kind of people in ways that kind of give certain things away, basically almost like a press tour level of directing teasing about a movie that he knows the details of, at least in the pitch stage, that would be incredibly cringy, incredibly unprofessional, and that would be like, even yeah, if you are the head of DC Studios, why are you talking this much about someone else's movie, even if you are in charge of it all? This is is weird. So if things got to that level, but this isn't that. So I don't know, rent over there, but um, A, yeah, he, he debunked Boyd Holbrook, but B, I remember the fallout of this where people were lashing out at James Gunn for like debunking it. Now, with regards to the Superman suit, and I want your guys' opinions here, we have this user saying, hey, is the picture of the Superman suit that Screen Rant posted the legit Superman suit likeness to your Superman movie coming out? Gunn says, nope, it's incredible fan art, just like Screen Rant said. Um, and I believe they're talking about this one here by 21X4. The reason why I bring this up is because Gunn is saying, now this has the new emblem on it, okay? It has like the trunks in the sense of like the Speedo version, if you know what I mean, rather than the kind of boxery brief version. That's pretty much like a Superman suit, as I think a lot of people will think it looks, it will look in the movie. You know, I think most people are saying or believing that gun is going to uh, actually go with trunks. You know, obviously there's going to be a cape, there's going to be red boots. You've got the new symbol there. So what's fascinating about his response, I guess you could look into here, is how does this not really share the likeness of the one in your movie? Well, there are ways, obviously, because basically the one in Gunn's movie, Superman with David Corrin's sweat, could look different. But now I'm like, okay, well, how different? And it makes you think what kind of innovations Gunn could have done. Now, we have this artwork here um, by Job Hutz. Now, I've shown some of his work before, and I really, really like this. So, like, this guy's really, really cool. Uh, with the way he comes up with his fan arts, you know, he takes a lot of time, you know, basing it on this model and just, you know, really implementing the textures and stuff. And I think he's done a remarkable job here. Like, you've got the new symbol on there. You've got, like, the nice texture of what the blue could look like according to what we get teasers of in the official Crest photo that we have seen. Now, the reason why I bring this one up is because 
could this look like the likeness of James Gunn's Superman? And would he reply, no again, or maybe like, oh, maybe on the right track. Now, of course, some people might say he's going to say no either way, right, until he actually reveals it because he doesn't want people knowing exactly what it will look like. And I am thinking, how different could you ultimately make it? I mean, you could, right? I mean, who knows what, you know, they're going to do with his wrists there. Like, even Snyder added a bit of, like, textures there and whatnot to change things up. And here on Job Hut's one, it's fairly uh, blank going down. You know, there, there could be differences there with what Gunn meant by no. Also, in the Screen Rant article version by 21x4, Gunn could have meant no with regards to, hey, well, you know, maybe it has trunks, but they don't look like that. Perhaps they look more like this. Now, I think, maybe I'm wrong here, I, I don't know if it's just the way I'm looking at it, but people have theorized, and I don't know if that's the case here, but trunks could be incorporated into the suit in a modern way. Now, I'm a bit, like, on both sides of the fence here with how I like the idea of it, but I'm not sure at the same time. With how, here, you could do trunks like this, basically, boxer briefs. Maybe they go down a bit further, I don't know, it's up to you how, how it looks, or maybe you prefer the Y front design. But instead of actually, hey, putting the suit on, then putting your feet through some, like, underwear holes, if you know what I mean, and then pulling them up, the red trunks portion of the suit is more actually incorporated into the material. So, for example, on my hoodie here, you've got different colors, but they're all a part of the same level of arm. Do you know what I mean? So that red is really actually just a color block on the suit material, the actual onesie Superman gets in, and there's nothing exterior going over the leggings of that suit. And I feel like that's a way of, yeah, hey, technically he's not wearing, like, underwear in modern day. It's actually just a color block of the suit that looks like it's underwear at the same time so you may say well isn't that just pointless then you may as well put underwear on maybe i don't know i guess that's down up to you guys i don't know we're gonna have to wait and see how it's different but it can't be too different surely but who knows what gun has up his sleeves like genuinely it could be very superman in all the typical ways you think okay well it has a crest there it has a cape uh it may have a belt but Okay, will it have trunks? Will it have details on his arms? How far up do the boots go? What kind of material they made out of? Like, who knows what they could be doing here? And I'm really looking forward to see it because we're going to see it within the next month and a half to two months, give or take. Yeah, I think somewhere around there. But let me know which way you would want the suit approached. Another story in DCU related things here is uh, something that was brought to my attention. This was reposted by James Gunn. But what they also pointed out is that nobody on threads really checks out the repost section and it's not really as prominent as it would be on Twitter, for example. And it's like, oh yeah, that's a really good point. And James Gunn literally retweeted this. And it's not like overwhelmingly massive, but it's definitely something for us DCU Batman fans, um, or, you know, those of us who are excited for the Brave and the Bold and what can be brought to fruition with Batman in a very fantastical, you know, version of the DCU, need to bear in mind. And he retweeted this thread about how this user says, it's Batman's anniversary, so I'd like to shed light on one of his best, but often overlooked relationships. So here's a thread of five aspects of Bruce Wayne's romance with Talia al Ghul that I like and hope to see portrayed in their upcoming DCU counterpart under James Gunn and his creative team. Now, what I agree with here is that I think with the way that Talia is sometimes presented, is done in a way in, in such where people think that she's quite one dimensional. It's like, okay, Oh, Batman, screw you, Re, oh, please be with me, Batman. If you're not going to be with me, then I'm going to do this. And hopefully by the end of what mastermind plan I'm doing, you might love me or something like that. When really there are actually other stories out there where there's a lot more in, you know, depth aspects to Talia that really big Talia al Ghul fans really would rather see brought to fruition with her iteration in the DCU. So... Um, I feel like Gunn being tagged in this, and, you know, he might have read it, but it doesn't mean he would have had to have reposted it. So the fact that he reposted it is something that is definitely to be taken into consideration here, and where he, he might be agreeing with more or less what I just said and, and what this user is saying with how there is, you know, quite a bit more. For example, number one, they truly know each other. An iconic moment in Batman comics is Talia lifting his cow to treat his wounds in her first appearance. This would mean Talia knew Batman's secret identity from the start, falling in love with his entirety and not just one of his personas. In addition, Bruce also gets to know Talia fully, including their vulnerable 
vulnerable parts she keeps hidden from everyone else, even her father. And this is what I mean. Even with the way they just wrote that out, and I think, you know, the way they're doing this thread is done quite eloquently, I have to say. But it's true. Like, it is a very, you know, often people are all about Batcat, Batcat, Batcat. Don't get me wrong, I like Batcat. But what I mean is, um, you, you read something like that, and it's like, yeah... You know what? Yeah, that, that's quite. That's quite. You know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, you you, you kind of want to see that nuance there with. Okay, Batman may not be with Talia in the DCU when we pick up with Brave and the Bold, but I would like their history to be shown in such a way that reflects this kind of, I guess, uh, enriched history rather than just like re. Okay, it was a one night fling in League of Assassins training days, and that's it. And then Damien's delivered to my doorstep. I think they could do it in the way that this user is saying here. And again, their intimacy number two related to the previous point: the fact that Bruce and Talia knew each other without secret identities from the start allowed them to develop a level of intimacy they hadn't experienced before. Not only did Bruce feel comfortable discussing personal topics with Talia, this intimacy would lead them to that shared night um, that resulted on the conceiving of their child together. Number three, their shared interest. There are different versions of Talia out there, but my favorite are the ones where she shares some of Bruce's qualities. I like the Talia who values life, has empathy, is selfless, and her co-creator Dennis O'Neill would put it, is a pacifist. All of these things are a part of why she and Bruce fell in love to begin with. So again, I think, you know what? A lot of people may want Batcat in the DCU, but since we're getting that in the Batman, I really wouldn't mind if there's kind of, you know, again, I, as I say, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not together in the Brave and the Bold. But with Talia's, you would assume, involvement, and I've gone into this with how I think Russell Gould could be involved and everything like that, there could be this kind of rekindled something that could be explored. I'm not saying necessarily rekindled romance, maybe they could tread that ground, but the sentimentality that those two still have for each other, especially now being reignited with the fact that they now share a son. And I would love a scene or two with a really rich shared scene between yeah talia and bruce but with really good dialogue i can imagine that being like pretty deep and pretty cool especially as batman fans you should appreciate quite a few of the relationships i think you know obviously from catwoman and batman but also to that of talia and some others out there and uh you know that that counts for barbara gordon as well I'm joking. Okay, that's the only April Fool's thing I'm going to put in here, okay? Now, lastly, with regards to DC little tidbit things in terms of, um, you know, stuff that is kind of in the woodwork a little bit. We know that there's a Constantine movie being developed with Francis Lawrence and Akiva Goldsman trying to do that sequel to Keanu Reeves' Constantine. And uh, here with Production Weekly, people have spotted that, eh, yeah, there's a new production listed for Constantine. Now, people are wondering if this is something for the DCU or if it's the uh, aforementioned DC Elseworld story that isn't quite greenlit yet, but James Gunn did say, you know, it's, you know, it's still being developed, basically, along with Tana Hesse Coates' as Superman and J.J. Abrams there. But the thing is, uh, you know, arguably... Wouldn't that be called, at least in a production weekly kind of print or something, if they've got some details about some kind of registering things going on with it, maybe, in some official capacity to the point of where they could even find some information about it? If it was for Keanu Reeves' sequel, would they really call it Constantine again? Or would it be like Constantine 2? It may not be eventually called Constantine 2, but you would have thought in any production details for a sequel they would call it Constantine 2 so I think that's why some people are speculating could Constantine being slapped down there just in its you know own singular word of Constantine mean that it's the DCU I think I would say that it's more for the Elseworlds thing if I was to give a takeaway uh, but you never know I mean I, I do feel like Constantine will be in the DCU hopefully at one point the reason why I think this is the Elseworlds detailing to some extent is because I do feel like maybe we, not maybe we, we would have heard about Constantine by now, but I feel like it. what we do know with Swamp Thing being the first more kind of, you know, I guess supernatural side of things in the DCU, and that won't be for a hot minute with what James Mangold is doing with that and how he's still got commitments to Star Wars as well. Uh, yeah, it's more likely that Constantine in the DCU could be maybe in a latter part of chapter one, because, you know, as I always say on the channel and repeat with what James Gunn said, with the 10 initial projects that were announced, that was less than half of what is to still be announced to finish off chapter one. That's not including chapter two. So that meant, okay, so if 10 projects was less than half, that means we've got at least maybe another 11 or 12 
you know, to, to go for chapter one. Now we have 13 announced. Well, not officially in all of them, but you've got Peacemaker season two. We know that's official. Uh, the DC Arkham series, we know that's official with what Gunn said, so that's 12. And the Teen Titans thing is the latest one, the movie, uh, from the Hollywood Reporter. So that's 13. So we've still got like maybe eight or nine projects to be announced. Constantine in the DCU could be at the back end of chapter one, maybe. Uh, but it could just be a chapter two thing. I'm hoping. I would love to see the supernatural side of DC explored, you know, with all kinds of, you know, things like that. Constantine, Zatanna, you know, Justice League Dark. You know, we've got Dead Man being teased by Gunn as well. So who really knows what could be going on? You know, I totally forgot about the Dead Man thing for a second there. Now I'm thinking, oh, now I'm going back into entertaining the DCU side of this production weekly Constantine thing. But no, I would say I put my money on the Elseworlds thing, but... You never know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the world of the Batman. Now, you may have heard about Batman Gate. I didn't really cover it on this channel, but people always told me, hey, Boba, do you know about Batman Gate? Do you know about Batman Gate? And it's been a big update here. A very, very big, very big, very big update. And um, so comicbook.com here say, the Batman judge rules that the DC movie wasn't plagiarized. The Batman 2022 was facing some serious legal issues, uh, which have now been resolved. A judge in New York ruled on Wednesday this week that Warner Brothers Entertainment wasn't legally liable for plagiarism over the script of the Batman, because I don't know if I left it out. <laughs> but yeah, they, he took it to court, literally. An accusation brought up by writer Christopher Wozniak, who was a DC comic comic book writer and freelance artist in the 1990s. The 45-page decision by the U.S. District Judge Paul uh, Engel, Engel Mayer found that Warner Brothers and the Batman writer-director Matt Reeves had not copied Wozniak's story, The Ultimate Riddle, now titled The Blind Man's, the Blind Man's Hat, which he submitted to D DC numerous times after writing in 1990. Wozniak also claimed he had sent the story to a film producer, Michael Olsen, in 2008 as the basis for the Batman's script. When the lawsuit was announced, Wozniak's attorney, R. Terry Parker, made the following claim. There are so many original expressions from my client's story found in the Defendant's movie that we believe this is a clear case of copyright infringement. The similarities are just too uncanny to be accidental. However, in something of a twist, the judge not only didn't agree that DC and Warner Brothers had plagiarized Wozniak's work to make the Batman, he pointed out that Wozniak's story itself was a violation of DC copyright laws. As the judge wrote, the story use of the Batman character and the surrounding protected elements is an act of clear and blatant copyright infringement. Then his team said, uh, we respectfully disagree with the court's decision and are now considering our next steps. So it is a bit nuts, um, like just reviewing all of this, you know, the, the end result being that he's been found uh, in breach of copyright infringement for using DC characters characters without authorization. I would like to know a bit more about that in, in the legal sense, because you know, I guess, you know, you can get fan films who don't make money off of it. So I want to know exactly what it is that he did that infringed on, you know, the Batman and DC characters copyright. Is it because he tried to file copyright for his story without authorization? I don't know. Um, but, you know, clearly Warner Brothers were clapping back there and the judge actually uh, saw merit to that. Um, but if you want to look into this a bit more, um, there's a really good kind of summary here on, I believe, Emma Rose Fox's uh, blog and where she has covered the, you know, suit for a long time and gave an updated story here. But they also break down all of the alleged, you know, similarities here, which, you know, I really don't think are similar. For example, you know, Mr. Wozniak's iteration of the Riddler is described as a lonely Riddler who has not been heard of in 20 years, end quote. Paul Dana's Riddler makes his first appearance in Gotham right after Mayor Mitchell's murder, when he also murders Commissioner Pete Savage. And, and that's true. I don't really see how, how, how that's uh, similar there. While the lawsuit implies is another one that Dano's Riddler knows Batman is Bruce Wayne, just like Wozniak's version of the villain. Dano's Riddler is unaware of the correlation in the film, and that's true. That's been proven. Uh, it says it in the script book, and Matt Reeves has also said that the Riddler, like, there's no conspiracy theory here. He doesn't know, even though they try to make you think that, and Bruce himself got paranoid, he doesn't know Batman's identity. So if you want to have a look at that for yourself, I do recommend going to their Twitter page and uh, just looking at the... I would say comprehensive breakdown of the alleged claims. And also, I, without reading this whole thing out, we have the declaration of Matt Reeves um, in support of Warner Brothers. So Matt Reeves had to get involved here and basically justify how the Batman was made. And here you can see page after page after page of Matt Reeves detailing 
the whole journey behind writing the Batman. And the funny thing is here, I kind of appreciate this in the sense of how Matt Reeves meticulously goes over his writing process and where, lo and behold, he, he also goes on to say like how he takes a long time uh, to write his scripts and he goes over, you know, his process of getting in Mattson and Tomlin and then also Peter Craig and um, yeah, either way, it's, it's very interesting and then he basically says towards the end of it, I have never seen any story by Mr. Wozniak nor have I ever met him. In fact, I had never even heard of Mr. Wozniak prior to mid-2022, months after the Batman was released. My first and only awareness of Mr. Wozniak prior to the source suit being filed was his posting of inflammatory content on social media about and directed at me regarding his claims like so yeah if you want to read matt reeves's own signed uh you know declaration here uh, it is pretty interesting and yeah uh that that's the update on that it is it, yeah i don't really have any other words <sighs> Now, very quickly, end of this video, ladies and gentlemen, we actually mentioned Michael Olsen uh, a minute ago with regards to the Batman Gate story. But either way, this is to do with Joker because Michael Olsen, if you don't know already, uh, he's produced lots of uh, DC Batman uh, projects in the past. Um, and he uploaded to his Instagram a picture of himself wearing the fully ado hat and also saying, you know, April 10th, 2024, fasten your seatbelt. And uh, as you can see here, he has liked many comments saying trailer soon on the date. I hope the trailer is April 10th, April 10th. Now, I guess you could say the dates could be switched around and it means October 4th. But uh, we know from Todd Phillips that the trailer is coming uh, towards the beginning of April, like slash mid. So the 10th of April kind of makes sense with regards to when we could be getting the Joker 2 trailer. Now, Future Boba here, as of when editing this video, Daniel RPK is saying or claiming that the trailer will actually be releasing on April 9th, so the day earlier. Now, apparently this isn't an April Fool's thing, and either way it fits in with regards to what I'm saying around about this time in the video. So April 9th, April 10th, around about there. If I remember correctly as well, I believe CinemaCon runs from eight, April 8th to the 11th, so that, that could be explaining it as well, with how it could be shown there initially, and then it could be a similar situation to that of the Penguin, where that new trailer that we got recently was shown behind closed doors, but it posted the next day. Hopefully it's a similar situation here with the Joker 2 trailer. So if it is April 10th, of which it seems to be heavily hinted here that we will be getting our first look at Joker 2, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be breaking that down in a lot of detail. Let me know what you guys think about this. Are you looking forward to the trailer or are you just intrigued or are you absolutely like, you know what, I'm not even intrigued. I don't care about it. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that and every single story in today's news roundup video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a long rambly one, uh, but that's how we do it here on this channel. If you liked it, let YouTube know by hitting the like button. It takes two seconds of your time and you know, hopefully it allows YouTube to uh, recommend my video out there a little bit more to people's homepages. So thank you for helping make that happen. Consider subscribing, but other than that, I'm going to love you and leave you. Really appreciate everything. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.